Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new and final episode of the year of our NR 2003-2021 NASCAR Cup Series season where we follow along every single race week along with the real life schedule to see how accurate our season is compared to the real one and we have the championship race here today at Phoenix Raceway coming your way. I am as usual joined by my good friend and a partner here in the booth of Jay Cook. Jay the final race of the year. We made it 36 weeks. It's been one heck of a journey here in our first ever attempt at doing this, but it's been a blast. And we have a championship race here today where I'm very excited to find out at the end of 156 laps who's going to be champion in our series here for NR 2003. Yeah, I think we're in store for a really exciting race today. We have four really competitive guys uh, in this final four, and Eric Amarola, Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, and Ryan Blaney. Each or all four of them are championship contending drivers this season. All four of them have done really uh, nice jobs of getting to this point in the season, and now we're down to the final race, which is a bit sad, I think, because I've enjoyed this series quite a lot. I'm, I'm a bit sad that this series is coming to an end, uh, but we can still find other things to do on NR, uh, and, and this, this game is always going to be here and always going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but I'm excited to see who wins this championship today. I'm excited to see uh, if maybe Kyle Larson or Denny Hamlin win it in this, and also real life as well. Uh, so this, this race, is, I think, is going to be a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to it. I am Blaney on pole, the top driver currently for the Final Four, Kyle Larson and Hamlin. You're the two drivers in the Final Four, start third and fourth, and then Eric Almarola down in seventh place there. So those four going at it for a championship here today. 156 laps, stage one, 40 laps, stage two, 40 laps. So stage two will be complete at the end of lap 80, and then we will race it from there all the way to the end of lap 156 to determine a champion here today from Phoenix Raceway as well. The final race ever for the Generation 6 car before moving to the next gen next year as the championship race, the final race of the season is underway here from Phoenix Raceway. You're going to see everybody dive down to that apron right away. And Jay, I think, honestly, for Phoenix Raceway is the championship race, the really standout kind of point of interest on this track is simply the restarts are going to be crazy all day long as they have opportunities to go four or five wide if they even want to on that dog leg. Yeah, the restarts truly are crazy here on NR at Phoenix. It, it really is the time to make all the passes. It's time uh, where everybody makes all their moves. And you can already see here, there's three wide all, all up here towards the top and all, and towards the middle pack as well. Uh, people go everywhere on the restarts around this track. And it could also cause some chaos as well. So these championship four have to be careful that they don't get themselves involved in a wreck early or at any point in this race at all. Because uh, they don't they don't want to wind up in somebody else's mess early in this race But they also know that if they're gonna make passes the easiest time to do it is on those restarts So it's gonna be a balance of how much uh, how aggressive they want to be but also how relaxed they want to be Denny Hamlin going backwards early on here in these first couple of laps now uh, as Almarola has gone forwards It's B uh, Blaney as well as Kyle Larson your top two here as they go down into turn one and uh, Jay we debated last week who was our favorite for the final four and I brought up a point about Blaney is he uh, dominated the last part of this race earlier in the year, but a loss in a photo finish to his teammate of Joey Logano. But uh, Larson, you can already see, is going to be a clear threat, I think, today. But who of these Final Four do you think might be the favorite here at Phoenix Raceway? I still think that, that Kyle Larson is our overall championship favorite. But then uh, Ryan Blaney, like you mentioned, is very strong here. He was strong earlier in the season. He's also been strong in this season overall. So I think he's another good pick as well. Uh, and then Denny Hamlin, he's, he's been probably my, the second strongest driver of the season, in my opinion, uh, to Kyle Larson. So all three of those guys are really competitive. You can't leave out Eric Amarola either. He's had a really nice season, and he's had a surge as of late with these last couple of races. He's looked... Uh, the best he's looked all season long. So all four of these guys, I think, are at the top of their game right now. Uh, but I think the, the obvious choice is still Kyle Larson. There you see Kevin Harvick, third place. Truex going to look to the inside there. Now Martin Truex Jr. had one heck of a tear late in the regular season, made it into the playoffs, and then, of course, picked up his first win of the season in the round of 12 and got him into the round of 8. But, of course, he got eliminated at the end of Martinsville last time out. As we saw, uh, a lot of playoff drivers, Jay, last week in Martinsville run into issues, and specifically guys that needed good days like Chase Elliott, like Truex. We saw them both have to come to the pit lane under green flag conditions and uh, have issues with saw Hamlin have issues but he had enough of a playoff buffer but obviously today going for a championship if anybody has those issues like Elliot or Truex had last week you're not going to win a title here today in Phoenix Raceway and that's been a common thing theme of these playoffs all the way from 16 drivers in it down to eight where playoff guys have just found ways to have issues every single week and it's been a, a mix of each single of each driver every single week uh I don't think a single driver's had a clean 
run all the way through this in, entirety of the playoffs. Every single driver has had an issue in one race or more. Uh, and so now we're down to only four of them, and all four of these drivers have to hope that that streak ends here today, that they, they do not have any issues. Uh, but I think that we might see somebody have something go wrong for them, whether it be something on pit road or something mechanically or a wreck. Uh, there's a lot of things that can happen here. This Phoenix is a little bit different than real life as well. This Phoenix, I think the racing is more crazy in this Phoenix. It's obviously also NR. The AI exists. The AI are a bit insane on NR. Uh, so these guys have to really be careful here and, and really hope that they don't have any issues go wrong or go uh, issues happen for them. I mean, we've seen Kyle Larson in NR2003 have a lot of things go wrong throughout this year, and he's still been, of course, one of the top guys alongside Denny Hamlin. Now, Hamlin has the most wins on the season. Larson just behind him here is, I think, what Hamlin's at uh, four or five wins, I think it is, uh, coming into this final race, and Larson's uh, three or four. As you see, Ryan Blaney is going to give up the lead there early to Kevin Harvick. Now, Jay, obviously, lap nine of 156, and these final four, they don't care about stage one or two. There's no points on the line, so I guess... There's probably not much of an urgency for Ryan Blaney to be fighting the hold on to the lead here on just the ninth lap. Yeah, all you really have to do is just make sure that you're ahead of those other three championship contenders. It doesn't matter if that's for first place or for 10th place. You just want to be ahead of those other three. So that's that's really the game plan that I think that the Blaney and either one of these other drivers is going to be playing towards is just making sure they're, they're beating those other playoff guys. If they have to let somebody like Kevin Harvick or Martin Truex buy them to go and take the lead in order to keep that position uh, in front of the other playoff guys, then they'll do, they will do that. They obviously still want to win the race, but they don't have to. So that, that's something that they'll also be looking to playing that game as well. Uh, and just, I want to mention Kevin Harvick again. We've mentioned him the last couple of weeks. Kevin Harvick came into the playoffs struggling massively. He got eliminated, and then as soon as he gets eliminated, he comes out of nowhere, and, and it seems like he's competitive every single week. It, it really kind of is a shame that he didn't make it this far in the playoffs because I think he could be a serious title contender had he been able to make it through that first round. And he won Talladega the next round. He got eliminated, so he would have at least gotten into the round of eight if he could have just put together a few good races in that round of 16. And then he ran so well, like you mentioned, in that round of eight. I think he could have been a threat to make it into the final four. And here he is today, running as strong as he is now. As Blaney seems to maybe have found some more speed in that 12 already now. As you see in the back, though, Al Morola was able to pass Kyle Larson. So was Byron. So was Kyle Busch, who's side by side with him right now. Hamlin's been struggling a little bit. And one thing I'm noticing, Jay, as well, is it seems like uh, that second lane right now might not be where you want to be. And that's why I'm seeing Larson and Hamlin falling backwards is when they go up to that second lane. It's much the same story at Phoenix as it is everywhere else. You, there's really one line to run around here, and, and once you get going and you get green, uh, you want to be on the bottom. And if you're not in that preferred lane, you, you're going to be struggling. On the restart, you can make it work because there's craziness happening everywhere. There's passes happening top, bottom, uh, all the way down at the wall everywhere around here. So you can kind of make it work for a couple of laps. And then once everybody gets kind of strung out and gets going here, you want to be on that bottom. And if you're not on that bottom, you're going to be at a disadvantage. And right now for Kyle Larson, he's at that disadvantage. Larson side by side with Kyle Busch's that second lane might be a disadvantage but he's doing a, a superb job right now trying to hang in there now as Hamlin's going to try and look to the inside now 14 laps in everything's calm so far what we're going to do here from Phoenix Raceways go for a quick break we'll be back to bring you to the end of this first and opening stage here from Phoenix Raceway no pit stops necessary here in stage one as I should have uh, mentioned earlier a field run by the way is about 43 to 45 laps so they are good to the end here as we'll be right uh, be right back from Phoenix Raceway Back from Phoenix Raceway, the championship race here. 15 laps to go in stage one. Blaney is now under attack from the 10 of Almirola. Blaney's been the best of the final four for the first 25 complete laps. But now there you see Almirola trying to make a move up the inside. Hamlin a little bit further back right there as well as Kyle Larson as they have to work through the 24, the 19 as well as the 18. Now while we were on break, we were looking at the fastest laps. Hamlin actually of the final four has the fastest lap so far in this race and actually no one else in the final four is in the top 10 with that fastest lap time now jay do you think that's something uh maybe to be of concern seeing that that raw pace is in the 11 on the short run at least or maybe it's something that probably these guys aren't worried about too much i don't know if it's of a concern for eric almirola or kyle larson they may not be worried about it too much but you have to go all the way down to i believe you said 21st place to find ryan blaney in his fastest lap so I think that's probably a little bit concerning for him. He's obviously been the better of the four so far in the early part in this race. But Eric Almirola has been able to catch him, and now he's on his back bumper. He's not been able to pass him yet, but he's certainly been able to catch him. Uh, so that might be a little bit worrisome for Blaney if he does not have the, the speed in that car. There you see Harvick continuing to lead the way as we close in towards these final 10 laps of the stage. So there should not be any pit stops needed under green flag conditions in stage one or stage two. 
but when we get into that third and final stage, it's actually going to be quite close on field. There will be a minimum of one uh, green flag pit stop, and then obviously uh, it'll actually be really close because we expect it to be a, about an 86 lap uh, stage three and a fuel run is 43 to 45 laps so it could get kind of close but uh we expect these guys to probably be smart enough to uh be able to strategize that out there as you see blaney took a bit of a weird line out of turn four right there as he closes up to the back of that four of kevin harvick now jay we've seen lap traffic play roles in a lot of these races this year and most recently i think almarola at kansas when he lost that race due to uh, Chris Buescher holding him up, and that gifted the win to Joey Logano on the final lap. Do you expect to see lap traffic play a role in potentially deciding this championship here today, or maybe at Phoenix? As of right now, things are nice and calm, and lap traffic is nowhere even in sight, so maybe you think it could stay like that throughout the day? I think it could if we don't get any cautions, of, if we don't wind up with uh, with any slower wrecked cars. If we start uh, getting some wrecks and we start seeing cars get damaged like we've seen before, and they start being off the pace, then we might see some lap cars affecting this race, but we're, we're 31 laps into this race so far, uh, and, and the leaders are not terribly close to any of the, of the lap cars. I know that third stage is, is 70, I think 76 laps or so, so that, that you can, there's definitely a, a lot of time if it goes green all the way to catch those lap cars, uh, but I'm not so sure that they will be a huge factor today unless we start getting some wrecks and some cars with damage. Joey Logano having a, a pretty rough run so far here down in 20th place. Chase Elliott, who started on the front row, is down to 14th. You got McDowell there just outside of the top 20. Bubba Wallace uh, just below as well. Daniel Suarez, by the way, had an issue very early on in the race. He is now scored one lap down. There's to see him in that Comscope uh, Trackhouse car. And the 66 of Timmy Hill is out of the race actually due to a valve issue that I think occurred on the very first lap of the race there. As we see these new teams, Jay, of course, uh, we know Trackhouse 2311 in our, in our 2003 series. Both of those teams picked up one win so far this season. Looks like it is going to stay that way but i think we can consider them they were both made the playoffs both only because of their wins but nonetheless i think impressive seasons from these two brand new teams here in the cup series and certainly something for them to build on as well going forward both teams expanding next year uh both teams looking promising i think and they, they have a promising future in the sport track house i think coming into this season was a big question mark it, it wasn't really nobody really knew what to expect from that team we, we knew that Suarez was going there and, and we knew we we know that he has talent he's a good race car driver we just didn't know the kind of cars that team would bring and they showed us both in nr and both in real life that there is some promise there there is there is some shine there and that team can get really good with some improvement and with uh, with another driver like kurt bush joining them uh, i think track houses are not track not, sorry he's not going to track house uh but in a way, Trackhouse is going to look really good, uh, and, and I think that it will be a, a strong team. And then same thing with 23XI. They're going to get really good as well, uh, and, and both of those teams, I think it, it's exciting to have them in the sport. Uh, and, and just, again, it's exciting to have new teams, no matter what, get into the sport, and whether if they're going to be part-time or full-time. Obviously, we got, you know, next year, calling coming in full-time. Uh, instead of just part-time and then they'll have an extra car being part-time so uh, you got the uh, other team that I can't remember what it is but it's uh, a team that kind of comes from the uh, Euro NASCAR series so we as well have the expansion of 2311 racing going to a, a second car with Kurt Busch then we have GMS racing coming into the sport full-time with Ty Dillon behind the wheel um, Jay next gen I think you know there was a lot of hype this year NASCAR saying you know best season ever with these new teams but I mean we're going into the next gen a new generation of cars and we have even more new teams coming into the sport than we did this year I mean this is an incredible um, potential year that we have coming for NASCAR yeah no matter what you you're feelings are about the next-gen car and what that what product that car could potentially bring i think the excitement truly has to land with the teams that are that are coming into the sport obviously the car if it winds up being a great product that's going to be really exciting and i i hope that the racing is really good with that car but there's some optimism with that right now and there's a bit of skepticism with that car and how it's going to race so i think that the thing you can be excited about no matter what is the teams coming in because like we just mentioned with track house and, and 23xi they're already here they're showing they can improve and the gms moving up to cup uh colleague moving up to cup that the, the Euro team coming to NASCAR for a couple of races uh, and, and also just general interest, I think, in, in bringing teams to the Cup Series and, and possibly the other series uh, in NASCAR as well, the other national series. Um, so I, I think that this is a, a really crucial time for the sport that it could expand and grow. Uh, it's just up, up to the executives on how they, they wind up making the sport grow between the TV ratings and between the on-track product. 
We know that, of course, the broadcast side of NASCAR as well, expanding a little bit with their networks. They'll be uh, a part of USA Network next year. So another big opportunity to get some more uh, exposure to the sport as the final lap here of stage one gets underway. Kevin Harvick leads the way down into turn one. Eric Almarola uh, has fallen off quite significantly here in these closing laps. He's now the worst of the final four. Blaney has led the final four drivers all stage long. Hamlin Larson side by side down this back straight away for the final time. Down into three and four. Almarola there just behind them. But it's going to be Kevin Harvick coming through to win the first and opening stage here of the championship finale. Ryan Blaney, the best of the final four. Then it's going to be Hamlin, Larson, Almarola. But Jay, we got all final four cars here at the end of stage one in the top seven. That's uh, so far looking to be a pretty competitive race we have going here for this championship, but now they obviously uh, have an opportunity to come in and make some adjustments here, maybe make some contact. There is Blaney, thank goodness, doesn't pick up any damage, but Byron, um, very surprisingly, is going to stay out on the track, and so is the 42 of Ross Chastain, so um, very intriguing calls there, but nonetheless, like I was saying, this is going to be Probably the telling stage now is now that these guys have opportunities to actually make adjustments to their cars. Yeah, and that the beginning of that stage looked a little bit rough, especially for Denny Hammond and Kyle Larson. They kind of fell back a bit and, and watched Ryan Blaney especially kind of pull away from everybody. Uh, and, and then towards the end of that stage, the middle the middle part of that stage is towards the end of it, Ryan Blaney got kind of reeled back in, and then there, and uh, Denny Hammond and Kyle Larson kind of went back up to the field a bit, made passes, and, and certainly looked strong. So I think they have good long-run cars. Uh, and Blaney, I think, certainly has a, has a good short-run car because he was able to pull away from everybody there at the beginning of the race and then kind of pulled back in, got passed by Kevin Harvick, uh, and then almost got passed by Eric Amarola at one point. So that was that was certainly a competitive stage one. Uh, now these guys get a chance to work on their cars, and we'll see how good they can make them. Almarola is going to actually beat off the 11 and the 5. Larson with a rough stop there, and that's definitely not going to be the pit stop quality that's going to win you a championship. Now, Larson's very lucky that it happens at the end of Stage 1 compared to maybe at the end of, say, Stage 2, where we don't have a guaranteed caution. We went caution-free here in Stage 1. Byron now brings it into the pit lane, but Chastain stays out, so that's going to be a bit of a curveball here uh, as we get ready to go green for Stage 2. We're going to go for a quick break, and we'll be back for the start of the second stage here from the championship finale at Phoenix Race Play. Getting ready to go green here for the start of the second stage from Phoenix Race with the championship race. We saw Ryan Blaney, the best of the final four in stage one. Harvick won the stage, and now Chastain stays out. And we expect to see this 42 of Ross Chastain on the pit lane within a couple of laps now. Uh, based off our testing, 45 laps is the, probably the furthest they should really be going. So an interesting start we're about to have here for stage two. And Jay, this has got to make you nervous of your final four competitor here for this restart. Yeah, especially if they're all trying to go crazy here in, in two, three, four wide on this restart, and all of a sudden Chastain winds up running out of fuel in front of everybody. I think he'll be able to go a couple of laps here because they ran under caution for a few laps. But he's still going to oh! go to pit road pretty early. They're three wide oh, already man. right there with some championship contenders. We, we mentioned these restarts, and there goes Chastain to pit road. We mentioned these restarts could get a bit crazy. That was that was very close there for Ryan Blaney and Eric Almarola. Almarola nearly took himself and Ryan Blaney as well as Kyle Busch out on that restart. What a save from the 10. That could have been huge right there. And Larson and Hamlin were right behind it. We could have seen all final four drivers right there potentially wiped out in an accident. And just that's something we come to expect, Jay, on every single restart here today. And we don't know if we got only one more or multiple coming here. But um, that's something that Almarola has definitely got to be a lot more careful of. Is he, he just about ended his championship hopes all on his own. Yeah, Almarola might have used up all of his luck right there too, because that was that was incredible how that did not end up in a wreck. And if we see something like that happen again, it may wind up being in a wreck, uh, playoff driver involved or not. So they, they have to be careful on these restarts. Uh, those four, especially, they they need to make it to the end of this race if they want to have a chance at winning this championship. These stages are not important for them right now. It might be important for the other drivers in this field because they might want to gain some positions and points, uh, or just overall have momentum going into next year. But it, the, the most important part is the end of this race for those four drivers right there uh, with the yellow banners and the yellow spoilers. So they need to make it to the end of this race and make sure that they don't get caught up in something like that. Kyle Larson looks like he's just uh, playing it safe right now uh, after seeing how chaotic it got there for uh, a couple of laps now. Is being single file restarts, it of course uh, keeps the chaos down to a minimum, but you can see obviously they still you know, try to go three wide into that dogleg area and it still gets pretty chaotic at times. So Larson now under attack, maybe uh, we'll have to wait and see if those adjustments are good or bad for that five car now as Almarola is currently third in that final four behind that 11 of Denny Hamlin. Now Matt DiBetto trying to make a pass on that number 12 of Ryan and Blaney and Jay. Matt DiBetto's final ever race 
for the Wood Brothers Racing Team. We still don't know what his future holds, but here he is now putting up a good run here in the start of the second stage. Yeah, likely his final race in the Cup Series for the near future as well. He, we've, we've, uh, or he's mentioned he's gotten calls about rides from all three series, but I don't think he wants to be in a non-competitive car. I think he wants to go somewhere he can win, so we'll probably see him go down to one of the lower series uh, and, and maybe find some sponsorship there and find his way back into the Cup Series eventually. But for now, I think the Matt DiBenedetto's Cup Series career uh, is going to come to an end, and he's got to find a way to get back up here. But uh, the, the conversation is still around these championship four drivers at the moment. And right now, Denny Hamlin, he's looking really strong to start this stage. He's just now about to pass Ryan Blaney. Uh, and he had some he had some speed at the end of stage one there. So I think Denny Hamlin right now has really got the strongest car of those four. There he goes on the inside of that number 12. And Kyle Larson, though, he is really struggling in the background. There you see him under attack from now his good friend of Christopher Bell. And for the first time today, we have a pass for the championship lead. Denny Hamlin to the point. Blaney fights back there to that right rear quarter panel of that offer pad at Toyota Camry. But Hamlin gets clear and brings out Morolo with him. And Blaney now, uh, maybe his adjustments weren't exactly what he needed. Now, J. Ryan Blaney, or not Ryan Blaney, sorry, Denny Hamlin uh, has been in a position to win championship multiple times 2010 he went into the homestead miami with the championship lead ended up losing to jimmy johnson 2014 he made the final four did not win 2018 or sorry 19 he made the final four still didn't win 2020 same thing and here he is again in 2021 looking for that first title um and definitely uh, as well the only or the most final four appearances from a driver that has not actually won a championship now does that surprise you with denny hamlin considering what a resume he has yeah, it is a little bit surprising that he hasn't won a championship yet, but I think that we're entering the the time of Denny Hamlin's career where he can start clicking those championships off. I, I, something feels a little bit different about Denny Hamlin this year, especially. Uh, he's He's been the same Hamlin as before, where he's very competitive, can win races, looks like a championship contending driver, but it, just something feels different about him this year. It feels like he could finally uh, click everything off, but both in NR and, and real life, he's got to fight off Kyle Larson and some other really strong drivers as well, so it's it's going to be tough for Denny Hamlin no matter what, but we're at a good track for him. Phoenix, uh, he likes this track. He, he knows what to do around here, and, and he's also just a, a fantastic championship caliber NASCAR driver as well. Uh, but as far as Zanard goes, he's, he's starting to take off all of a sudden. He is really moving forward. But on the other, other end of the scale, Kyle Larson has is, is really fallen back. This is the worst we've seen Kyle Larson run all year long, uh, other than when a crash has taken him out. Uh, that five went from being, um, you know, trying to pass Denny Hamlin at the end of stage one, who is now the front driver of the final four, to now 19th place, about to fall down to 20th place behind Bubba Wallace. Jay, pretty obvious, whatever they did on the pit lane was a completely wrong move to that number five. He's finally down, uh, finally down to the bottom as well. I'm not sure if he's really ran many laps since we started stage two on the bottom at all. So we'll have to see if he's able to maybe make some ground back up here now that he's on the bottom. Uh, but either way, even if you're up on that top, if you have a strong car, you can still kind of make it work and not lose that many positions. And, and he just fell kind of like a rock uh, to start this stage. So obviously something is wrong with that car, whether it be there, there's a vibration to it, uh, wrong changes made on the setup or something. Uh, but obviously something is going wrong with that car and it is not good for Kyle Larson. It's something that, that's developing and we'll have to keep an eye on. And we mentioned it before earlier in the uh, episode with Kyle Larson, specifically of the, the final four drivers. He's been the one we've seen issues happen to the most this season. It always seems like uh, he's either winning or competing for a win, and then just something seems to go wrong for that number five. And we're seeing that potentially here today now, as we don't know if there's an issue or if it's just they got the adjustment wrong. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But um, Jay, we know that obviously they're only going to have one more opportunity uh, potentially to really have an extensive amount of time to adjust that car because uh, we only have one guaranteed caution and that's at the end of stage two so uh, now it's absolutely crucial for that team to spend the time under that stage two end caution and make sure they get that car right for stage three and based on the speed that he had in stage one i'd say that that's either something mechanically going wrong with that car like he's down a cylinder or that's just playing out they made bad adjustments on the pit stop and i think it's it's probably bad adjustments on the pit stop so now they're gonna have to figure out what they have to do they have to go back on those adjustments and then figure out what they're actually going to need to make the car feel uh better and make the car drive like kyle larson wants it to drive so it's going to take some time i think at the end of stage two here for them to get that right uh and then they might have to hope for a couple of cautions in stage three as well or maybe a couple of cautions here in stage two before the stage is over with uh for larson to get that car right and get the adjustments that he needs but at the moment uh it, it, things are looking very dire for that five team 
Denny Hamlin out in front of your final four. Blaney and Amarillo side by side in the background there for the seventh and eighth position. What we're going to do here from Phoenix is take a break now as we have just over 20 laps to go in stage two. And we'll be back to bring you to the end of the second stage as Kevin Harvick continues to lead here from Phoenix Raceway. Back from Phoenix Raceway, Denny Hamlin made a pass on Kyle Busch during the break. Got up to second place. Kyle has fallen a little bit there behind the one and the 21 of Kurt Busch and Matt DiBettadetto. on Hamlin now putting pressure to Kevin Harvick. Blaney down there in the sixth position. Then you go to Al Morola, who's under attack from Chase Briscoe, having a strong run here today in Phoenix Raceway. Kyle Larson has made a little bit of ground up, but he's having a tough time completing passes right now on the 20 of Christopher Bell, the 19 and the 41 uh, of Truex as well as Cole Custer there as we look back up towards uh, the front you see Hamlin right on the back of that four and Jay we're seeing that uh, 11 of Denny Hamlin as this race goes on now less than 10 laps to go in stage two but he's continuing to get faster and faster as this race goes by and it's like his final four competitors are going the complete opposite yeah, he's looking really strong at the moment, and that four of Kevin Harvick still continues to lead this race. I think he's also got a very strong car as well, but I can't fully recall back to our first Phoenix race, but I feel like this was another race where we had kind of the follow the leader train where you, you could make passes everywhere except for first place. And I, I think that might be a little bit of what's happening here as well. It looks like Kevin Harvick uh, maybe has a, a little bit less stronger car than Denny Hamlin does, uh, but then he's just not, not able to make the pass on him. Uh, and, and Kyle Larson, we, we saw him, we talked about possibly him being stronger once he got to the bottom and, and that's kind of what happened he got to the bottom and he was able to make some passes but he's now that he's getting back up to the stronger cars he's still kind of struggling again so i do think that there is a bit of a pace issue there uh whether it be again through something with his car or something just adjustments wise that can be uh corrected on the next pit stop but he, he's he's looking better than he was he's still just in a bad position uh and still lacking some speed in that car definitely uh gonna need some help for that number five of Kyle Larson William Byron we saw him stay out when the leaders pitted originally at the end of stage one then he came in a lap later so he was at the back of the pack and he's worked his way back up to 21st place there as you see Suarez uh, working his way through traffic he's still a lap down so none of these passes he's currently completing are counting for position there you see Ryan Newman in the sixth car uh, what is likely to be his final ever race in the NASCAR Cup Series are for Rush Fenway Racing currently in 25th place he hasn't officially announced retirement but it's pretty much a, a guarantee at this point we uh come to believe now is wow oh we got some trouble there for anthony alfredo there who looks a little bit off the pace he's going to be pulling off that shouldn't result in a caution i wouldn't think now as we come back to the frame here up front and hamlin's actually gotten passed by the one of kurt bush and now is under attack from the 21 of matt de Benedetto here now is out the caution does come out actually for anthony alfredo so jay that that makes it interesting here because i believe we might get a one lap shootout or more to decide the stage. So what do you even do? Maybe if you're Kyle Larson, you take a chance and maybe risk it on strategy. Uh, yeah, he could try a two tire stop here and, and try and gain that track position. But then you might be left in a little bit of a hole because if you have to pit again for four tires, everybody else may stay out on the track here. So I'm not too sure what you do here if you're Kyle Larson. Uh, you may also play the, the game of let's take four. If everybody else takes two, we'll be in a good position to start stage three uh, or, or anywhere in stage three when everybody else ultimately has to pit again or their tires just fall off because they only took two. So I think we might see everybody take four here, but there might be some two tire gambles uh, as well. Not very often we see a caution in NR2003 for a car actually um, off the pace and stopped on the track. So uh, a little bit of a difference uh, to see that. And right now there you see Kyle Larson coming in here. Or maybe, Jay, do you think you take this as the opportunity now? You know another caution's coming. Why not spend this one to try and get as many adjustments as you can to make that car competitive again? Yeah, and I think that might be what he's doing right now. You see him taking four there, so he's not going to try a gamble. I don't think really anybody's trying to gamble with two tires here. Everybody is going to take four. Uh, and then for Larson, get those adjustments, try it as well. Get a, get a lap or two to see how it feels. Obviously, it's not going to be long enough at all to see how the car truly feels and, and know what you truly need. Uh, but you might be able to get a little bit of a, of a hint at it and, and know what uh, that crew chief needs to do to fix his car. So hopefully for Larson, they're able to get their, their adjustments redone here. So caution comes out due to Anthony Alfredo uh, stopping on track here now as it currently just has him scored one lap down. You see him sitting in his pit box right there. We'll see what the actual issue was hopefully here soon if he actually ends up DNFing from this race. So Kevin Harvick. Still out in front, you got Kurt Busch there in second place, then Matt DiBedetto in P3. Now, Jay coming up 
on this final stage we are uh, in a few moments time after the stage two concludes um, what, do, what do you do if you're maybe a Kurt Busch or a Debedededo Harvick of course been the fastest car so far but do you want to be in this championship battle here as you see right now Hamlin and uh, Bumper or Hamlin and Blaney bumper to bumper Almarola not far back do you really want to be a non-playoff guy fighting with these guys going for a title well, I think for Harvick, he's been so strong, and he's not really been affecting the championship fight so far. So I think that that's not really uh, a, a cause for concern for him at all. But if you're Kurt Busch or Matt DiBenedetto, Kurt Busch might be trying to get that final win for Chip Ganassi in the Cup Series. And then Matt DiBenedetto, he doesn't have a ride for next year. He's still trying to get his first career win. I'm sure that's the only thing he's thinking about. He's not thinking about that championship fight at all. So those two there, uh, Kurt Busch and Matt DiBenedetto, are, they have their own goals to accomplish to get a win for their, their final races with their teams. Uh, and, and so I'm sure that that's something they're thinking about as well. And that's probably why they're up here and they're, they're, it, I don't think they're going to deliberately do something to try and affect the championship, but if they're in front of the championship drivers and there's still a long way to go in this race, I don't think they're going to, to worry about those guys and just do their own race. If it comes down to the final five or 10 laps and they're kind of, they kind of see they're in the way they make it out of the way. They see Kyle Busch as well, uh, still winless. Uh, trying to get one win here in the finale to not ever uh, or not have his first ever winless season in the Cup Series. One lap to green, which means it is going to be a one lap dash here from Phoenix Raceway to determine stage two. It shouldn't get too, too crazy here. But what I'm most concerned about is uh, how the AI react, actually, when the caution comes out at the end of this lap. Because, you know, they're still going to be bunched up and still cutting down on that dogleg coming to the uh, green, white, checkered flag at the end of stage two. So that really could be where the chaos uh, presents itself. And then, of course, we're going to rack it up. They might pit again, and then we're going to go right into another restart here in a few moments' time. So, uh, Jay, honestly, this oddly timed caution is going to potentially present a lot of chaos here at the end of stage two and going into stage three. And these playoff guys have to think about that. They don't need a stage win. They don't need to worry about stage points here. They just need to worry about keeping themselves clean. Even if they have to lose a spot to one of their championship contenders, they have to worry about making it to the end of this race first. So they, those drivers have to be careful. Meanwhile, these other drivers can be aggressive. And, and so that's, that's it's going to be interesting to watch here how they handle this one lap. Uh, and like you mentioned, how they also handle getting the immediate caution flag. Kevin Harvick takes off pretty early there in the Geico restart zone. Already builds up enough of a gap. We'll get the caution command here. As soon as they get down to the back straightaway, we'll let them get it settled and sorted out here as quick as possible. Hamlin to the inside of the 21 of Matt DiBettadetto as the white flag is in the air in stage one. Nearly saw an incident already there with Hamlin. And oh, we got pit stops for the, for the four and the one of Kurt Busch and Kevin Harvick. Not sure what that's about as maybe, I, I have no idea to be honest with you what that could be, but they might be okay as they exit turn four, Hamlin wins stage two. And there's the 10 in Almirola as well as Blaney there side by side. Kyle Larson there got the 20 at the line. And that was something, Jay, I think uh, we did not expect to see was the four and the one come to the pit lane for some reason. And that, I don't think this is strategy at all. I have to see what they do here. But I, I think that maybe both of those drivers both coincidentally had loose lug nuts or something with their car. Very quick uh, for the one and the four. Very quick stops, yeah. So so something I think might have went wrong with the previous pit stop, and that's why they had to come back down pit road. I, I don't think there was any uh, reason for them to pit there for strategy at all. Uh, and obviously cost them a ton of track position with the caution coming out only one lap later. So I, something had to have happened there where they felt like they had to come down pit road immediately. Now, that caution, of course, saves them as well because they do remain on the lead lap, and uh, we know they both have very fast cars, so Denny Hamlin wins stage two uh, in a, a weird change of events there, and he almost got caught up in an accident. These restarts presenting a potential, uh, a lot of chaos here today in Phoenix, but what we're going to do now is go for a break, and we'll be back for the start of the third and final stage of the season to decide a championship between Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, Ryan Blaney, as well as Eric Almirola. Back from Phoenix Raceway, getting ready to go green for the start of the third and final stage year of the season uh, in our debut season of our NR2003 uh, series. Here is now Denny Hamlin, Eric Almorola, Ryan Blaney, then Kyle Larson are your current final four order with Hamlin out in front. Now, is this a race from here on out to the end of this third and final stage at 156 laps? Now, one pit stop guaranteed remains in this race now jay we've seen two stages and we've seen the final four order shuffle around quite a bit here now you think hamlin at this point is the favorite do you think almorola blaney or even kyle larson has something here still to say before this race comes to a close i think all three of those guys still have something to say before this race ends but denny hamlin currently at the moment certainly does have the best car of those four i i think 
Uh, and Eric Amarola, he's looked strong in this race as well, and so has Ryan Blaney. Ryan Blaney has led a lot of, la uh, led a lot of laps in this race. And then Kyle Larson, we've got to watch for him to, to make a comeback here and hope that they got those adjustments right this time around. He's uh, he, He's made up some positions, and he's done a better job than he did at the beginning of Stage 2, but he's still got a lot of ground to make up. Now, Kyle Larson, with, with it being so hard to, to pass, honestly, I think he's got to put up the, the drive of his career here in this final stage now, as you see Almarola in third place here into turn three, Bellaney just a little bit further back in fifth place, who seems to be a little bit off here, at least on the couple of laps. We have run now as we've had more cars in the pit lane, and I just saw Kurt Busch again, as well as uh, the 37 of Ryan Priest, who as well doesn't have a ride for next year, uh, as that will be a uh, one-car operation at JTG. But Jay, Kurt Busch's whole race here is falling apart all of a sudden here in the last uh, closing laps of Stage 2, and that puts both Ganassi drivers a lap down in their final ever race in the Cup Series. Kurt Busch went from having a chance to win this race to all of a sudden now he's a lap down and, and really struggling. Something's going wrong either with that car or with they just keep making mistakes on their pit stops, uh, and he had to come back down pit road again. And I'd, I'd have to assume something is going on with that car mechanically, uh, and, and it's really cost him a chance to win here in this final race of the season and the final race in that Chip Ganassi car. Kyle Larson on the inside of Joey Logano as well as he's going to try and follow his good friend of Christopher Bell through on the inside of Cole Custer and that would put Larson up into 13th place if he's able to complete these passes right here now as you got Austin Dillon though right on his back bumper there as they go down into turn one now Jay if you're a non-playoff guy do you do you race uh, a final four driver harder when he's running outside of the top 10 than you do if he's up towards the front going for that title? Personally, I don't think you do. You, you give them a little bit of a break, and you know that they're they're fighting for a championship, and you, you'd want that same respect if you were in that same position and the roles were reversed. Uh, so I think you, you drive them with a little bit of respect, and as I say that, Austin Dillon full sends up the inside of Kyle Larson and puts him back to the outside, which is somewhere uh, that Kyle Larson is absolutely not want to be. That's where he lost a lot of positions last time at the beginning of Stage 2. Uh, so Larson wants to find his way to the bottom really quick, or he might lose another spot to Bubba Wallace and potentially Martin Truex Jr., uh, but yeah, I, I think that you, you race them with, with more respect than you normally would, uh, give them a little bit more room, but obviously these AI are showing at the moment that they're not willing to do that. They do not care at all now as Hamlin continues to lead the way. Kyle Busch in second place, Almarola third, Debedadetto fourth, Ryan Blaney rounds out the top five currently here now as you see Debedadetto trying to make a move to the inside of that number 10 of Almarola and Jay if you're Denny Hamlin that's exactly what you want to see right now is as many cars between you and the second guy in that final four and Debedadetto is about to make a two car buffer there for Denny Hamlin potentially. And Matt DiBenedetto, we were just talking about how you might race the drivers with, with a little bit more respect, but for Matt DiBenedetto, I think it's a little bit of a different story because, again, he's not guaranteed to be in the Cup Series next year. He's not guaranteed to be in the Cup Series ever again, uh, and this might be his best shot to win with his 21 car, so he, he's still probably going to be aggressive as he can be, and if he has a chance to win this race, he's going to go take it uh, and, and not really care about the, the playoff situation. Kyle Larson now losing another spot here to Truex and maybe even William Byron as well here in a few moments time is Hendrick Motorsports teammate now as Kyle Larson continues to try and fight hard on the outside but is at the end of the day I mean hurting himself more and more now as he's going to continue to leave that inside line open as he continues to drop down to 16th potentially even 17th place it's going to be crucial for him to try and stay out in front of that 24 and yes he does stay clear there so we'll see if he can settle in at 16th and move his way forward and Jay I don't think any of us expected this I mean after the year he's had hands down so far the worst run he's had in terms of just overall pace all season long and they saved it for the absolute worst moment of the year for it yeah this is certainly the worst Kyle Larson has looked this season and it's it's extremely surprising to see it come in the last race of the year where everything is on the line and he's had the entire year to build up to this race and keep his momentum up and, and be ready for this championship he's pretty much known uh, since the playoffs started that he would have a shot at getting to this race and he, he was in great position to make it to this race and there was there was some moments in the playoffs where he looked like he, he might be in a bad position in a position to lose out uh, and get eliminated but still he, he was on that wave of uh, very good points and in, in, in a very good position where he could just kind of uh, not really cruise but he could have it easier than some of these other drivers and, and that potentially maybe hurt him a little bit coming to this I, I you would think that they would keep the momentum up and, and all that kind of stuff and, and with the way he struggled the last couple of weeks maybe that team is just uh, not as strong as they normally are Almarola get passed by Ryan Blaney and now is under attack from the 14 of Resco who's having a, a strong run here today for that Stuart Haas racing at number 14 car hasn't really been in the mix a lot in his rookie season but uh, he's had moments where he has really shined through and he's having one of those moments here today uh, as well Jay we're seeing Chase Elliott here I mean 
Don't give up hope on Kyle Larson. I think Chase Elliott might be a good example of that now as we saw him running really poor earlier in this race, but he's an example of someone that's taken their time, worked on that car, and now here they are working their way up inside the top 10. Between, or the difference between Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson is that Chase Elliott struggled at the start of this race, and now we're here in stage three. Two stages later is when he's starting to look competitive again. Kyle Larson has started to struggle uh, at the beginning of stage two, and, and now we're here in stage three, and he's still struggling. So I, I think the time might be running out for Larson to find his footing a bit if he's going to follow those same footsteps that Chase Elliott did. Uh, the, the time is running out for him no matter what, and, and Larson's really got to get going here. Uh, he's made up, obviously, a position here on Martin Truex Jr., but one position is nowhere near enough. He's got to gain a lot of ground here, and he's also under attack from his teammate at William Byron as well. So, obviously, something is off with that car, and Kyle Larson uh, not in a good spot at the moment at all. Looks like Byron might just uh, cruise right on past the number five of Kyle Larson. There you see Harvick in the background as well, starting to work his way forward. Kyle Larson stays clear, maybe giving a bit of a break from his Hendrick Motorsports teammate now, uh, who was eliminated recently from Final Four contention. Now is uh, Elliott there under attack from that number two of Keselowski. Now is Almarola starting to close back in on Ryan Blaney, who's trying to pass his Penske uh, affiliate teammate there for Wood Brothers Racing of Matt DiBenedetto right now. But Jay, I mean, obviously Blaney is not too far back and now he makes a move up the inside of DiBenedetto. But what's the urgency for a guy like Blaney or Al Morola, who are, you know, like I said, not far back. They're about a second and a half behind Denny Hamlin. But at the same time, they're seeing him drive away and they know how hard it is to pass here in Phoenix. I think it's pretty urgent because there's no more guaranteed cautions in this race at all. And, and if you let Hamlin get too far out there, you may never reel him back in, no matter how strong of a car you have. Uh, and again, too, we've seen it several times in this race. It's one thing to catch them. It's another thing to pass. And especially uh, with this package that we have, we've seen several drivers catch the leader or stay with the leader, just not be able to make any passes this race. Uh, and, and so at the moment, I think for Ryan Blaney and for Eric Amarola, it has to be kind of desperation mode already even with 56 or 55 laps left in this race they have to go right now and make sure that they stay with the back of, of Denny Hamlin and make sure that they're they're there if he makes a mistake to make a pass on him Blaney clear of the 21 now if you're mad to Benedetto you might fight that 10 car a little bit harder than you did with the 12 of Ryan Blaney due to them being uh, alliance cars now uh, as Almarola tries to slip through and he actually looks like he's going to easily clear the 21 of the Benedetto and put the fight right to the 12 of Blaney down into turn one he's going to peek up the inside now I think Jay we've seen these two specifically uh, shuffle back and forth between each other the most in this race as Almarola seems to get a little bit better and then Blaney will get a little bit better and then they just come uh, continue to shift positions and at the end of that that might actually keep them from being able to run down Denny Hamlin if they keep fighting each other yeah those two fighting each other is ultimately I think going to hurt them more than it will help them they, they kind of need to follow each other and and uh not necessarily drafted towards the front but just being in a single line where they're able to, to run consistently not have to worry about fighting one another uh or anybody else around them and, and go and make up some time on Denny Hamlin here but again I also don't know if they'll even be able to do that they, they both have strong cars but I think at the moment, just Denny Hamlin is that much faster than them. He's, he's got a very good car. We saw it uh, earlier in this race, and he's been able to keep up that speed, and he's been able to keep up on the adjustments and keep himself out front and put himself in a fantastic position. I think Denny Hamlin at the moment has the strongest car here, uh, and he's certainly showing that by pulling out this gap. Now, of course, we're looking as well at uh, potential green flag pit stops being a, a possible decider of this championship and I mean we look at Denny Hamlin's history at the pit lane and he's had a history with issues uh especially with speeding you think that's something lingering maybe in the back of his mind here now coming up to what could be very well the final pit stop of the season and that could be what decides if you win the championship or not I think it could be something that the spotter and the crew chief are thinking about and they may remind Hamlin as he's coming to pit road to not speed but I don't think it's something that Hamlin needs to worry about because if he starts worrying about his past history on, on pit road of speeding and and making sure he doesn't speed and all that kind of stuff he may focus on it too much and then wind up making that mistake because it, uh, that's all he's doing is worrying about that or make another mistake because he's focusing solely on his pit road speed and not focusing on his, his driving and what's going on on track ahead of him so for Hamlin, I don't think he has to focus on that too much. He doesn't want to dwell on that. And he wants to, to get past it and just be reminded maybe quickly, hey, don't speed as you're coming up the road here. And that's about it. I think another advantage Hamlin has as well as he's got his teammate Kyle Busch directly behind him. He's probably not going to force the issue too hard right now and as well be a good opportunity to keep some cars behind there. As you see Blaney uh, trying to make that outside work similar to what Kyle Larson was doing. And now he is paying the price. And Jay, you see that line of cars right there. It's crucial for Blaney to not get stuck on that top as he could very well find himself to the front bumper of Kyle Larson here in just a few laps. Yeah, and unfortunately for Blaney, I think he's he's stuck up top now. I don't think there's any way he gets enough run to stay in front of Chase Briscoe here, unless there's enough of a gap and enough of a hole, enough of a hole that forms between that 14 and the two. There, 
Brad Kozlowski is a teammate of Blaney, so he could be nice and let Blaney in here, but Kozlowski's also not coming back to this team next year either. You, you, you never know uh, if he was if he's willing to play the teammate game or not. So Ryan Blaney, maybe that, that might be his only hope right now is that, Kozlowski, is that Kozlowski will let him in. If he does not, like you mentioned, we may very well see him fall back to Kyle Larson in a couple of laps. And a uh, quick update on Kyle Larson since he's passed Bubba Wallace, uh, uh, as well as he passed the 19 of Truex. He hasn't made up anything else now as he continues to run in the 14th position. Uh, as you can see, Byron right on his back bumper. He might be able to pass that 20 of Christopher Bell. Blaney still, uh, I mean, you can see the difference between the 5, though, and the 12 days. Blaney is running that top, and he's not losing anywhere near the amount that Kyle Larson was. So clearly, I think that 5 just, they just don't have it here today in this final stage. And it's quite crazy to think, especially at the end of stage 1, when Larson was putting the pressure to the guy leading this final 4. And just one pit stop and one adjustment, it seems that they haven't been able to fix whatever went wrong there in those first adjustments uh, that they made. And we've also seen that be clear, uh, pretty clear as well, because once a, once Larson has found his way to the bottom, he's able to make a make up a couple of those positions, but he's, he's never able to really gain all that uh, ground back and, and really get back towards the front. He's been able to make a, make up a couple of spots so far in stage three, and that's about it. He's still sitting behind the twenty car at the moment, and he's got his teammate uh, William Byron right behind him, uh, who we've seen him battling with uh, a lot in this race or a lot in this stage three so far as well. So for Larson, yeah, he, he's really struggling in this race. There's something not there with that car, whether it be adjustments they, or they just don't have the speed in that car. I, I, I don't know which, but something is wrong uh, for that five car, and it is coming at the absolute worst moment. We are going to stay right here because we now we got green flag pit stops for the final time coming up here within uh, another 10 or so laps there. Bellini putting the pressure to the back of the 14 of Briscoe. He knows now after getting shuffled out, he's got to get on the move. And here he is trying to put that pressure to the inside of the rookie there for Stuart Haas for racing. Tyler Reddick having a strong run. And Jay, I think Tyler Reddick has had, you know, an incredibly impressive end to this season now he's got two wins in his uh you know what second season i think it is in the cup series and they've all come within the last few races at the charlotte roble and then uh as well recently at martinsville so it, it's been one heck of a turnaround for tyler reddick who of course didn't even make the playoffs and i think he's been one of the the biggest uh drivers that's shined through these playoffs of course yeah i would i would uh compare him to kevin harvick as well because the same thing that Kevin Harvick did once the playoffs started. Reddick really kind of got strong, and he's had his strongest parts of the season these last 10 races, and he's looked really good. And, again, that's building up momentum for, for next year. Uh, and putting Tyler Reddick, Tyler Reddick, I think, in a good position confidence-wise, and also his team might be feeling good uh, going into next season. But I've mentioned that a few times, and you also have to mention along with that uh, that we have next year coming next year. And so that, this could all mean nothing. Uh, going into next season at all, you know, we have a brand new car coming. You don't know what information you're going to have with that car. You, you got to figure everything out. You got to figure setups out. Uh, so that confidence may not mean a thing, and, and you, it's going to be all about who figures out the car the quickest. Kyle Larson has gained another spot. He's up to 13th place, uh, but obviously now you see how many laps we have left. Uh, just over 40 laps remaining. So the way Kyle Larson is gaining, um, if at all, it's definitely not going to be enough to get him even anywhere in contention with these other three drivers that he is trying to beat today for a title. Now, Blaney has kind of uh, gotten stuck here in seventh place and now is losing time to that 14 of Chase and Briscoe. Almirola continues in third. He's been hovering around a second and a half behind the leader of Denny Hamlin this whole time, but Jay is second and a half. Still close enough for Almirola to pounce and as well maybe attack on some strategy there. And I mean, we don't no, the caution's coming out. We've seen a caution come out there at the end of stage two as now Larson's under attack from William Byron down into turn three. But we don't know if a caution is coming or not. So does that maybe open the door for Almirola and that team to potentially attack a little bit on strategy and try to force that 11 car's hand a little bit? Almirola's done a nice job since we mentioned they need to get single file and just kind of try and run down the leaders or at least keep the gap consistent. He's, not a, he's done a nice job of doing that. He's gotten single file and... He's really kept the time consistent, if not gained a little bit. I haven't I've been paying that much attention to the time, but he, he certainly looks like he's, he's managing, that, managing that gap a lot better than when him and Blaney were going at it in the 21 as well. Uh, so I think the possibility of him trying something on pit stops is there. Again, like you mentioned, no guarantee of a, of a caution here. You can't rely on that and, and go with the same strategy you've been going with. you got to mix it up a little bit, I think, if you want to try and get out ahead of Denny Hamlin. Uh, so I, I think we could see him short pit here, and, and if he does that, I think that would be a, a very smart thing. We obviously... Or we, we don't know also how much tires are an advantage here or not. There is some tire fall off. I that's that's guaranteed. I uh, just don't know how much. So if Almarola pits three or four laps early, uh, he could really gain a, a huge amount of time, or he could only gain very minimal. 
Now, if you're Kyle Larson, you're probably trying to play long game. I mean, we saw uh, as well last week and other times throughout the season uh, that uh, when these pit cycles get going, a bunch of chaos happens and sometimes staying out longer ends up getting you on uh, up front and trapping some of the competitors a lap down. So maybe that's your strategy now if you're the five of Kyle Larson, you think? And for last week in Martinsville, it was pretty easy to see that I was going to that was going to be chaos on the pit stops because under caution, uh, we saw it happen where, where drivers were struggling and running into each other and having all kinds of things go wrong uh, entering pit road. So this week, I think there's a bit of a question mark there. We haven't seen we haven't seen uh, green flag pit stops yet. So that, I think there's a bit of a question mark there if things are going to be an issue or not, of whether maybe it's on entry or on exit uh, to where these drivers may run into each other coming through the dog leg or something like that. So. I think that there is a bit of a question mark there whether something like that could happen. And if you're Kyle Larson, I, I think the strategy is to try and stay out long. You're not going to gain that much time by short pitting, uh, certainly not the amount that he needs to get up to Denny Hamlin in the lead. So, yeah, why not stay out long and see if he can get a caution? Larson currently 12th place. You saw him make that pass there uh, on the 20 of Christopher Bell, who's now under attack from Larson's teammate there. Oh, there it is. Almarola has brought it into the pit lane very much earlier than a Denny Hamlin. So he forces Hamlin's hand, and we're going to see what Denny Hamlin's response is going to be here now uh, as he could come into the pit lane this time by as he goes down into turn one and two. And there he comes through the center of the corner, and it looks like, yes, him and Kyle Busch are going to come into the pit lane. Now, Jay, do you expect, um, uh, it was about a second, it was 1.7 seconds or so between those two. Do you think that one lap for Almorola is going to be able to make up that difference? I don't think it'll be able to make up that entire that entire difference. And if it does, then we'll show how much the tire fall off is here. But I don't think one lap was enough for him to gain 1.7 seconds. Uh, but it will certainly gain him some time, definitely. Uh, and, and he'll be closer to Denny Hamlin. But he, I think he still might need another caution if he doesn't gain it all right here. We expect to see the rest of the field coming in. And sure enough, that's exactly what it is. Kyle Larson bringing it in as well. Uh, as I actually, Ryan Blaney might still be out on the track i believe now as oh no there he is right there so he comes in uh just in front of hamlin now as he, or he pits on the same lap hamlin gets those left sides jacked up and now the question is has Almarola had a good enough of a pit stop did hamlin speed we don't know we're gonna find out here as kyle bush is gonna be right on his back bumper but stays behind him here comes Almarola in the background right there it is gonna be close but it's not gonna be close enough hamlin and kyle bush remain in front of that number uh then of Almirola got a little bit close right there. I thought that could have went wrong pretty quick, but Jay, you can definitely see that Almirola definitely gained some ground out of it now as he's within striking distance, but Hamlin and Bush both have those fresher tires now, so it might still be an advantage towards Hamlin. Yeah, it's only a one lap advantage though, so I think that Almirola is not going to be too concerned about that. What he's going to be concerned about is the fact that this 34 is here now and, and affecting this race a bit. I'm not sure if McDowell has pitted yet or if he's a lap car, uh, but he's going to be in the way here of both the 18 and the 10. Looks like he might be coming to pit road right here. No, he's just that slow. So he's either a lap car or he's really struggling on tires at the moment. Now Marola, all that time he gained, he's going to lose it here uh, by sitting behind the 34. It gets past him now, and it looks like so far, it looks like he has, has a pretty fast car. He caught up to them really quickly. Obviously, they were still getting back up to speed, but he went into that corner. He went into turn one, or turn three, actually, sorry. He went into turn three really quick, I saw, and he was able to make up some good ground on the 18 and the 11. So I think he has a pretty strong car at the moment. They might have made some good adjustments there. So McDowell uh, is currently leading. Uh, now he comes into the pit lane right there and will give up the lead. And then the 78 is second. He pits as well. Uh, so it will shift back to Denny Hamlin being out in front. And there you see Kyle Larson actually lost some ground. So not good for him whatsoever. And you saw Ryan Blaney has definitely lost some ground as well as he's trying to fight for his life now. As we are going to go for the very final break of the season here in NR 2003. We'll be back very shortly to bring you to the end of these final uh, 30 laps here about to get underway from Phoenix Raceways. Denny Hamlin continues to lead just by a few car lengths over Eric Almirola, who's hunting him for a championship here in Phoenix Raceway. Back from Phoenix Raceway, just over 20 laps to go here. In the championship race, under break, Kyle Busch makes a pass on Denny Hamlin to take the lead. Kyle Busch still winless this year. He's never been winless in his career in the Cup Series. And here he is in the final race of the season, looking to change that here and get that first win of the season. But it wasn't over for Hamlin. Al Morola pounces on the opportunity right there. And he would look up the inside of that offer pad Toyota Camry through the center one and two. And sure enough, Eric Al Morola on the exit of the corner shifts through into the second position, passes Hamlin for the 
the championship lead here with less than 25 laps remaining as they would continue to battle through three and on the exit of turn four. And Hamlin has some good fight right there on the exit of the corner, but Almarola ends up getting the best of it. He cuts down on that apron through the dog leg down into turns one uh, as well as two. He's going to be able to clear Hamlin right there through the center of the corner. Now here's a live shot. Hamlin is right on the back bumper of Almorola. Now Jay Kyle Busch leading the way. Uh, but Almorola and Hamlin bumper to bumper going for the lead at this point. Who do you got? These two have been so strong in the playoffs. And now it comes down to these final 22 laps we're about to come up on. I think I still have Denny Hamlin. He's, he's had the strongest car all race long. He's still got a very good car. Obviously, he's able to hang with Almarola here. Uh, and he's still sitting in third place. So I, I think that Denny Hamlin will, will get every, get it done here. And he'll he'll move Almarola if he has to. I, I don't think he'll shy away from that at all. Uh, so I, I think as long as he's able to stick with the 10 here or maybe get past him, uh, that, that's the ultimate strategy for Denny is, is just to straight up get past him. But don't move him. he'll move him if he has to. A little bit further through the field, there you see the 21, the 8, uh, as well as the 14. Then you got the two of Kozlowski and Blaney has dropped down to 8th place. So him and both Kyle Larson at this point uh, have fallen out of the picture. Larson in 12th, Harvick has worked his way back up into 13th place. He's been trying to work his way back forward ever since that whole weird scenario with him pitting uh, towards the end of stage who that was and uh, they had to come in for like a second pit stop as soon as we went back green so Kyle Busch continues though to the lead and we're going to stay focused right here for the time being now Hamlin Almarola within a couple of car lengths of each other and Jay we were a bit surprised to see this though uh Almarola I mean made the pass quite easy and I mean beforehand before the caution or sorry before the pit stops happened Hamlin was pulling away from Eric Almarola so it's a bit surprising to see that he was just able to drive right up there and just go around that 11 car well, I think Almarola was able to take advantage of the situation. He was right on the bumper of both Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch. And when Kyle Busch made the move to get around Denny Hamlin for the lead, it put Hamlin to the outside, and he never had a chance to get back to the bottom. And we know that that outside lane uh, is a definite disadvantage to the inside lane. And, and that's where Almarola was. He was to the inside, and, and Hamlin was to the outside. So I think it was really him just able to take advantage of that. And now we're seeing Denny here really put the pressure on, and he's able to look to the inside. Now Almarola's going to be to the outside. He might stay clear, though, down into turn three. Is Hamlin going to try and force it? Oh, he is close, but not close enough. He needs to really be able to get that throttle down on the exit of turn two to be able to hang alongside with him now. As you see, uh, both the Benedetto and the Ada Reddick are actually closing in on these front three drivers. Well, they get there before this race closes. I'm not 100% sure on that, uh, but they are closing, so keep that in mind. There you see the two of Kozlowski now passing the 14. Bolani working his way through traffic, trying to get up here into the top six now. Uh, Jay, still possibilities of a Caution coming out, and that could, of course, change everything now as you see Larson under attack from the four of Harvick. But I think a bit surprising to see how clean this race has been compared to the overall season so far we have had. And that caution coming out is something that Kyle Larson and Ryan Blaney are practically playing, praying for right now. They, they want that caution very badly. Uh, and I, I think we have the possibility of getting it here. A, to see an NR race go completely clean without any wrecks would be completely shocking, especially here at Phoenix. This is a track on NR uh, that can cause absolute chaos. I've seen it several times in the races that I've done. This, this track is one of the more wild ones. Uh, so to see this track or to see this race go completely green would be shocking to me. And we're also starting to get to catch lap traffic now. I, I said that I didn't think that lap traffic would be much of an issue and, and much of a factor, but I, I was obviously wrong in that. They're starting to catch some of those cars now. And that provides the possibility of, of some things getting crazy. Maybe not up here towards the front with these drivers who are kind of strung out, but there's a lot of drivers close together towards the back of the top 10 uh, and the top 15. And there's a lot of drivers back there uh, that are that are two and three wide at the moment. So if these lap cars start to get back to those guys, that might be where we see the issues arise. It could have the ability, though, to uh, decide this battle right here now as we saw Almarola lose out in Kansas to Joey Logano uh, when he got held up by the 17 on the very final lap of that race. Kyle was closing in on the back of the 78 of BJ McLeod, Magda Benedetto, uh, and Reddick, and Kozlowski as well, all closing in on these front three drivers. But by the way they are closing per lap, it doesn't look like they are going to get into the mix here before it comes to a close. Now, uh, as Hamlin's just got to wait for that right time to pounce on that number 10 of Eric Almarola. He is obviously, I think, faster than that 10 right now, Jay. He hasn't lost anything to him. It's just trying to get under him and get that car to, you know, drive off the corner, I think it's going to be his next challenge. And he's gotten several times where he's been there and, and he's made the, the run on Almarola. He's just not been able to stick to his inside going into turn three. Uh, so I think he does have a little bit stronger car at the moment. He's just got to find the right time to make that move and, and maybe also hope Almarola slips up a little bit as well because the moment he does, Denny Hamlin is going to pounce on it. 
Just over 10 laps to go. Hamlin and Almirola scrapping it out for both looking for their first championships. Every single Final Four driver looking for their first title here, actually, in Phoenix or Raceway now is right here. The 78, this is going to be a big factor in how this race could play out between these two now as Hamlin within a car length. Where do they catch at 78? Where does the 10 or the 11 go? Does they dive down towards turn one there? The 78 staying a, a little bit higher. Now he drops down to that inside, but they didn't catch him uh, at a, a really bad spot. Hamlin, though, is right on the back bumper. This could be his opportunity now as Almirola is right to the back of the 78. What happens down into turn three is the real question now as Almirola is right there on the back of the 78. Can't get below him. And Jay Hamlin, uh, this could be his opportunity, maybe his one and only shot right here to make this pass. I thought his best opportunity was going to be on that back straightaway there. And now Almirola is going to get to the inside of the 78. So this opportunity here to use this lap car as a pick may not have worked for Denny Hamlin. Uh, but he got very close to making it work on the back straightaway that last time around. He got he, he got the run on Almirola and was peeking to the inside. He just never uh, was able to get there, unfortunately. Uh, but Hamlin is still right on the back bumper of the 10. Anything can happen towards the end of this race. And again, if he's there on the back bumper coming down to the last couple of laps, you can also see Hamlin use that bumper and move Almirola out of the way. The Benedetto is closing quick. I think he's the fastest car on the track in these closing laps. Kyle Busch, though, continues to lead the way. There is another set of lap cars coming with 10 laps to go here in Phoenix to decide a champion here in the NASCAR Cup Series now at the end of this 2021 season. Who is going to come out on top? Hamlin slips up a little bit right there to the outside, coming to nine laps to go in this race. As he takes a lot wider exit out of turn four. We've been seeing that now as Almirola cuts the dog leg, the dog leg. They're trying to, you know, stretch out that gap as much as possible here. Now, uh, as you see that 21 closing, Jake, could Benedetto maybe play a, a role in this? Or do you think he might just kind of hover in behind them? And honestly, could actually maybe help Denny Hamlin be able to get an opportunity to pass that 10? Well, again, I think that DeVetta wants to go and try and win this race. And if he feels he has the fastest car on track at the moment, then he might just try, try to get up here in this battle and maybe try and create something to happen. And, and like you mentioned as well, if he's able to get past Hamlin and then go and make a run at Almirola, that might provide the opening for Hamlin uh, to make a pass on Almirola as well. But you can see Hamlin trying to kind to, uh, trying to explore right now and, and explore different things, running different lines. Uh, and it almost worked for him there in turn three. He kind of diamond the corner a little bit and was almost able to get a run on that 10 car. I think him running the higher line in, in three and four is going to give Hamlin an advantage because he gets the better run off the exit of the corner and get a little bit quicker down into one and two. And he can try and get uh, try and get to Almirola's inside on the exit of two. Seven laps to go in Phoenix. Hamlin wants that championship. He's been working so hard to pull it off. And so is Eric Almirola, who's been unbelievable in these playoffs here now as it goes down the back straightaway continues to lead by car length over hamlin down into turn three we know hamlin has a faster car currently than eric Almorola, but he has to actually find a way past him that's his problem here as they both cut that dog leg kyle bush comfortably out in front with now five laps to go this time by as he just Right now, of course, doesn't want to see a caution. Kyle Busch looking for that first win of the year. Hamlin is there on the back of the 10, just not enough once again. He's got to get that nose below him into turn three. And honestly, Jay, I think if Hamlin can just get a nose into one of these corners on the inside of Almorola, I think he's probably going to be able to complete the pass. He's slowly and slowly starting to get closer to being able to get to the inside of Almorola. He's, he's doing a really nice job. Uh, of getting that run that he wants. He just hasn't been able to officially execute it yet, and I don't think he's going to be able to this time either. But if he gets another good set of corners like he had a couple of laps ago, he could find himself to the inside of Almirola. It's going to take a couple of laps to build up, I think, as you see him get closer here down the back straightaway. He might be closer again next time around in, in, uh, in, in one and two. I keep calling it three and four. Uh, if he gets close enough down there in one and two, I, I really think that we could see him uh, get to the inside of Almirola down the back straightaway. But again, too, just on the bumper, you got or, or on his bumper, you got to think about Hamlin. What is he willing to do? Is he willing to move Almirola for a championship? Gets close on the exit of turn two, but kind of loses a little bit on the exit right there. Coming to three laps to go in the championship. Kyle Busch has gotten through just about all of these lap cars. Just got to get through the 15 of Davison. They should not catch that 96. I don't know. It could be close. Three laps remain. De Benedetto in the mix now. This could be the deciding factor right here now uh, as Hamlin. And now Jay really can't do what he probably wants out of turn four because that 21 could pounce up the inside any moment there as Almirola goes up the track a little bit. Here comes Hamlin to the inside. Like Kyle Busch to the pit one, lane. Kyle Busch is on pit road. That's uh, 
That is certainly an interesting strategy call. I'm sure that they can make it to the end, so something had to happen there, or that team just feels like they have to come to pit road. But Hamlin had his chance there. Almarola slipped up, made a big mistake, but somehow was able to get a good run off the corner and keep Hamlin from getting to his inside. Denny Hamlin had his opportunity right there, and, and it went away. Two laps to go. In the season, Hamlin has the 21, the 2, everybody behind him here as they approach the final lap. And Hamlin, he's only going to get one shot at this point. And he's had so many right here and he's not been able to make anything happen. But now he's got everybody on his back bumper down into turn 3 and 4. Kyle Busch, we don't know why he came into the pit lane, but he loses his shot at his first win of the year. Hamlin, come to the final lap, is right there on the back of the 10 of Almorley. Here comes Keselowski. He's going to look to the inside of the 11 down into turn 1. White flag in the air for Eric Almorley. And that J right there could potentially seal the deal. The only uh, hope that Hamlin has left is if Kozlowski goes to make a move on Almirola and makes him wash up the track big time while Denny Hamlin gets back to the bottom here. But Hamlin is going to still be stuck to the outside because the two did not get going at all. Eric Almirola is going to be able to keep himself in front of Denny Hamlin here. Out of turn four, the unthinkable Eric Almirola wins the race and wins the NASCAR Cup Series championship here in 2021. Unbelievable. Um... I think the only format in the world that could allow Eric Almirola to win a title in his life is the one he's been given here uh, today. Wow. I, Jay, a loss for words there as Kyle Busch headed right at the end of that race, cruising to victory. Everybody else made it so very weird uh, to see. He's still on the track, of course, so very, very confusing there from the number 18 of Kyle Busch. But what a day for Eric Almirola and I think proved the world wrong today now as he picks up, I think, his uh, fourth win of the year here as well as an unbelievable drive from that 10 is that 11 had one shot and unfortunately he wasn't able to make it count and eric almirola certainly was the underdog of these four here in this championship fight but i mentioned earlier in the race how strong he's been uh, recently in the playoffs especially in the last round uh he's really been i think the strongest guy the last couple of races of the playoff drivers and he showed it here at phoenix he he wasn't the strongest car all race long but he was able to make those adjustments there and, and also that that pit stop uh, got him closer to Denny Hamlin, and he found his way in front of Denny Hamlin when Kyle Busch made the pass for the lead, and he never gave it back up to, to Denny. There was a couple times where Hamlin got close and was able to make uh, uh, small runs on Almirola, but it was never enough to get past him, and Eric Almirola did the absolute best that he could, and, and it wound up winning him the championship. Uh, it was just totally shocking, and, and I, I did not see him being the champion of, of these four drivers. I, I, I thought that it would be either Hamlin or Larson, and, and uh, the championship favorite all season long, Kyle Larson, by the way, finishes the worst of the final four and has a really, really bad race for that team. An awful race for Kyle Larson. Ryan Blaney there in sixth place. Hamlin second, of course, Almirola in first place. Kyle Busch uh, goes winless for the first time in his Cup Series career and with two laps to go while leading the race very comfortably brought it into the pit lane uh ends up 29th first car a lap down so of course they just pitted and i think just took feel basically there so a baffling call to say the least right there um as you see the rest of the finishing order so what a race to say the least and that concludes our season of nr 2003 our debut season of doing this together uh jay and i and it's been crazy to say the least at times we've had some massive accidents uh, a, a lot of drama has happened and then at the end of it we got probably one of the top guys we did not expect to win the championship as our champion and that is eric almirola there for stuart haas racing and the number 10 car unbelievable to say the least jay i mean what were your thoughts overall on the season i think uh, for our first time out, i thought we did a pretty good job hopefully we uh, next season can continue with the next gen car and continue to step up our production quality but overall i think for the first season not only did we do pretty good but i think it was a, an enjoyable experience through these 38 weeks uh if we count with the clash and the duels and whatnot as well yeah it felt a bit rusty for me to start out the year and i wasn't totally confident but but now i i feel fully confident with it and, and i enjoyed this this series a lot i enjoyed these races uh they were a lot of fun to do and it was it was also a lot of fun to kind of see the parallels between our series and the real life series obviously larson dominating the living crap out of the real life series and he dominated uh, a pretty good portion of this series as well in our in our, in our series same thing with denny hamlin uh the second driver in real life also kind of in my opinion the second driver to kyle larson in this series uh the only thing that we have not seen pan out yet is if our championship 
uh, is going to look anything like it does in real life. So does that point to the underdog in real life winning the championship? I don't even know of those four in real life who you can who you can consider to be the underdog because Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, and Martin Truex Jr., all four of those drivers are championship caliber drivers, truly, truly championship caliber drivers, and all four of them are very good. So I don't even know who you can point to be the underdog. Uh, in real life but as far as in our goes it was a lot of fun i really hope that we can uh, do it again next year with the next gen i also look forward to the expansions we can do with it and also other series that we can do with this as well you and i have been talking uh in the background of things that we want to do on nr and, and we have this one thing planned that we want to do in the off season uh and some other stuff as well so nr i think is, is a, a fun project for us and it's also a fun time spectating these races and just seeing how crazy they can get we've had some extremely crazy races this year and it, it led to some really uh, interesting playoff drivers as well, and it led to a lot of crazy playoff races too. That wraps it up for us this year in 2021 for the NASCAR 2021 follow along series that we did. Uh, we certainly hope you guys enjoyed what you saw, and uh, let us know in the comments, of course, what you thought about it uh, and would like to see maybe next season, and maybe uh, as well as potential project ideas in the offseason that we could be dabbling in. But that does it for us here in Phoenix Raceway. Eric Almarola is your NR2003-2021 NASCAR Cup Series champion. We'll see you guys next time. Have a great day, everybody.